There's a certain intimacy about Gustavo's playing. He invites his audience, he invites his listeners to come into a very special place. Uh, there's a scripture quote where St. Paul says, Behold, I tell you a mystery. And when Gustavo starts playing, um, um, I, I hear uh, that, that, that phrase. He is going to tell us a mystery or unveil. Or, or if it's a piece that we know terribly well, we're going to relive, to, you know, to reignite the, the beauty, the, the intimacy of this music. And that's true whether it's, um, you know, very soft Debussy or whether it's uh, a roiling Chopin. It's Gustavo's invitation to, to intimacy, to draw you into the music. Maybe at a level, level you hadn't considered before. Uh, and that's, that's what I think makes him stand apart. He is a colorist, and whether he's playing uh, Chopin or Ravel or Mozart, the colors that he brings out in the piano and <clears throat> the way he contrasts them, uh, I mean, kaleidoscopic is a, is a good term. It's a term that uh, some of us writers overuse, but the wonderful juxtaposition of all the colors that he is capable uh, and, and this has to do, I believe, with his, with his technique, which is, which is very supple and subtle and, and draws sounds out of the piano rather than pounds them out. There's a place for both, of course. You, know, uh, yeah, you, you, you can't play Bartok and, 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 and uh, gently coax tones out of the piano. But, um, but drawing these, the, these colors uh, is... is, is is very much his signature, as, as, as I recall his playing. I think the most important thing is that emotional quality. Uh, the best example that I can think of, um, it's like when someone who is very dear to you embraces you. And Gustavo's playing embraces the listener. It brings you in to his circle, to his musical vision. And uh, this is really quite precious and not very frequent in the concert hall, because so much pianism is display. And Gustavo has all the technical equipment to display, and when it's called for, he does that. But that's not his signature. That's not who he is. It's this intimate embrace of his performance that um, transforms the listener. It, it transforms me. And that's why it's always worthwhile making the effort to come and hear him play. <laughs> Gustavo is from here, he grew up here. Uh, in very modest circumstances in Chula Vista. Uh, he was championed by music lovers in San Diego who wanted to see him continue. And so he went uh, to New York, went to Juilliard, studied, won competitions, and yet he has kept the San Diego connection. 
And part of that we see here in La Jolla at the Athenaeum with his annual uh, summer series that he plays. And the devotion that he puts into that music is his return on that San Diego investment. So, so he belongs to San Diego and uh, he has the opportunity, you know, to play every, almost everywhere, probably anywhere he wants to play. But that he returns to San Diego, uh, I think is a sign of his character. Don was uh, a, a fluent, uh, a highly informed, and a rather objective uh, music critic and writer, someone who rarely had an axe to grind. Uh, and, and people respected his criticism. Uh, people who received his uh, less than flattering reviews uh, said unkindly things to him, but overall, uh, he had a very stellar reputation in San Diego. And he was one of the first persons to realize uh, that Gustavo's talent was more than just uh, a precocious young piano student. And he advised uh, uh, Gustavo in uh, choice of teachers and I think helped convince his family that he really needed to go to New York City to continue his education, to become the concert pianist that he saw in him. And uh, I think Gustavo benefit, benefited immensely from the kind of confidence in him that uh, Don Dirks showed and uh, pursued with, with uh, diligence and uh, quiet assurance. interpretation was that his mentors, and especially the late uh, music critic of the Union, Donald Dirks, felt that he could not get the kind of education that he needed here in San Diego, which is not putting down the San Diego teachers, but uh, in terms of the cultural milieu in which he would mature. And so I think uh, it was wise counsel to get him out of San Diego, which has its many virtues, but it is not a cultural music hub. And, uh, and to have the kind of pedagogy he would get at, at Juilliard in New York City, exposed to all of the um, uh, performance, not only the, the local orchestras, but all the visiting orchestras, visiting artists. Uh, I think that was of, 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 of great importance. And maybe the genius was saying, uh, yes, I'll do it. I think he's a great example um, that privilege is a bane and that he had to strive and and there was a certain modesty about him, about his demeanor, about uh, the way he approaches the piano that only comes from the way he was raised.
there's a warmth and immediacy about his playing that is really quite rare. Um, uh, if you want fireworks, they're everywhere. But if you want something that speaks to your heart and that has an, a musical and an emotional integrity, you really need to hear Gustavo.